let's proceed with just a, an overview of what i can what i can say <laughs> um anyway uh this is frex i don't know how many of you already has the plugin and uh, it offers two different uh, uh, views for the spectrum analyzer sure then sure thank you very much um and uh, we have the analog view and the digital view the difference between uh, these two views that are also present in multifrex is that uh, the analog emulates uh, an old uh, spectrum analyzer that uses lead bars and 31 different bands well the original unit had 28 bands but we designed it with 31 because it was more useful and still in use in many recording studio because it offers a good uh, overview of the balance of the sound so if i use it the one i've set on the master you can see how it uh, describes uh, the sound uh, visually uh, very easily also if you disable the peaks you can see it dancing and uh, have a, a good reference many uh, engineers that use that say is that when this area is around uh, the yellow or the red and this stays in the green you have a good balance uh, it's just a, a rule of thumb but uh, it's useful to, to to know that you are doing it well uh, we also provide a side view so you can see only the side component of the stereo signal that means the difference between left and right so if you have a very wide signal you will have a lot of action here but uh, um, in this case we have a, a drum bus that is not that wide so we only see the symbols that has uh, uh, some stereo some, some stereo image and the other the rest of the sound it, in, is in the center so it's uh, in, in the mono like the kick and the body of the snare over here. Uh, if I go to the digital view, I have the spectrum I used to uh, from all the other plugins you probably already have. You can also choose the integration time. Uh, we have uh, chosen these, uh, these, these preset times because uh, they uh, represent uh, a, good, uh, um, a good balance between uh, faster uh, at, at times that shows you the actual peaks and uh, um, the transient, uh, an average that is uh, good for the human ear, and uh, the, the last one, it's very slow and it's useful to, to see an overall average of the track levels. So with uh, these three times, you can see uh, a correct overview of the track. This control is also, of course, available in uh, all the other uh, in the other um, spectrum analyzer that use uh, this kind of uh, of spectrum. So it's in thirty one and also in multifrex. I can show the peaks, reset the peaks. Well, if you only had this kind of spectrum analyzer, you should uh, to mix a. Uh, uh, these are the, the these drums you should probably use uh, another another tool like an equalizer and uh, uh, for example if uh, i wanted to create the sound for the kick drum i am going to use the digital one and see that i have all the body of the of the sound here so you can you, i can use uh, this tool to under, to make it sound more balanced because we are lacking stuff here where is the beat of the, the sound of the beat of the kick drum and uh, you probably already know these things uh, so let me know if uh, if i'm talking about things you already know um, and uh, using a, a, an eq like the sw34 i can equalize the sound and make it more like uh, the one I have in mind. 
so that you can't hear right now, unfortunately. <laughs> so I will just lift the eyes and then uh, remove some of the rumble because uh, I see a lot of stuff here and I don't need that. So in a cool like this, I can remove uh, all the stuff down here and uh, uh, just remove some of the things we have uh, here that are really not needed. So I will look at around uh, 400 hertz and uh, with a sharp Q, I can just remove this. Also, yeah, that's what I did. I share the computer sound, but for some reason, when I sh when I choose uh, the Zoom audio device, nothing plays. So I don't know. I will probably have to ask the support because uh, we are paying them. So <laughs> that's what they are there for. Uh, but anyway. Uh, this is the most basic spectrum analyzer we have, and uh, it's uh, useful to inspect how uh, the, the, the frequency are distributed in the spectrum and to take the decision accordingly. For example, if I look at the snare drum, I can see where the body of the, of the snare lies, and uh, it's probably uh, in the same uh, region of uh, something from the kick. So using two instances together, I can in some way see Okay, um, this is a way to, to see uh, where uh, the, the conflicts are, but of course we have a better tool for this, and uh, it's called the Multifrex. So let me disable all the Frex instances and enable Multifrex. So now we have uh, a tool that is more advanced and uh, it shows the same digital or analog view that you have in Frex, but it also adds a list of channel. The name are picked up automatically when you use the VST3 or the audio unit. Um, it doesn't work with the uh, uh, VST because the standard does not provide a way to query the host for the other track. And uh, I've seen that it should work on, uh, on AAX, but um, I'm not sure why. Sometimes it doesn't. So <laughs> uh, it's something we have to understand better. But the ST3 the ST3 and audio unit work flawlessly. And um, you get all the, all the tracks that you have uh, uh, put uh, uh, multifrex on. So I have an instance uh, on the kick, an instance on the snare, one on the tom, the other fourth tom, the overheads, and uh, the room track. Uh, if I pre just press play, I will see the sound from the kick drum here. And uh, it's just the same sound that you've seen before. But if I also enable, for example, the snare drum, I can see them together and I can show the peaks and the average level of both, track, both tracks. So uh, the average level, it's uh, an RMS uh, measure, measure of, the, of the level. So it's a, a pure 600 milliseconds RMS window 
um, and the peak is just the peak. So I will disable them because uh, they're actually making some visual noise right now. Uh, I can also add the overheads and the room track, for example. So it's very busy right now. And I can see that almost everything is in this area. You see how many action there is in this area. We also have um, a faster way to see that. That is the conflict mode. With the conflict mode, you can see only the part of the spectrum that are in common between all these uh, selected tracks. So uh, I see that this area, especially, I was just I had just uh, already seen that uh, using the standard view, but this way I can I can really see where the problem is. And uh, now I can act on the single tracks to clear up this problem if I judge there is a problem. But now we have peaks that are going up to uh, 36 dB, negative 36 dB. So it can be something to be fixed, especially because it's around uh, 200 Hertz that uh, is actually, if I disable the conflict mode and just add the two tracks, it's where the body of the snare is and uh, is uh, definitely having a conflict with uh, the kick and the room and the overheads. So I need to decide which uh, sound will occupy that part of the spectrum. Uh, then what you question have you considered have a making an oscilloscope that has the same side chain if every there enough good one? Well, um, I, it would be interesting, but I need to understand your user case. So uh, what uh, you need an oscilloscope to see different signal for which reason? Because the oscilloscope it can uh, it can become uh, complicated, uh, especially for audio tracks. Well, not for synth, but for audio track, the the signal is very messy usually. Okay, the phase, the phase. Okay, interesting, interesting. We will um, consider that it's it's very interesting. It's a, a very interesting uh, thing, and uh, it will can help to align uh, the drums correctly and uh, check the phases. Very good, very good idea. And thank you very much. And care to 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 add the link uh, to the chat so I can write it down and have a look. If you if it's on YouTube, thank you very much. Um, I, what I was going to do now is to use the same equalizer to uh, fix some of the mess that between uh, the snare and uh, the room track, because uh, this is usually where the uh, worst uh, um, collision occurs. So I will take multiflex and SW34. Uh, now playing the track, I want to see the room and the snare. Well, I want the body of the snare to be in the center and to be uh, very thick. So I don't want the room uh, to mess with this area. So what I'm going to do is to enable the low pass filter and uh, high pass drastically at 200 Hertz, the room track. Then, since it is a cue, doesn't have very stiff filters, it's very musical EQ, but it's not a surgical one. Uh, I will also use uh, uh, the low shelf to do the same. So I can really lower the frequency, but of course I need to move the spectrum analyzer after the equalizer, otherwise I can't see anything. Now I have drastically removed probably too much of that sound, but I have cleaned up all the, all the lows here from the room. So I have a space for the, the body of the snare to breathe.
thank you very much for the link. And uh, uh, I don't know if I'm talking about stuff that you already know. So let me know if, uh, if you want me to talk about something else, because uh, I'm just uh, giving you an overview on how to use these tools to, to mix. Uh, so uh, now I have cleaned up uh, the, the snare and the room. So the snare can breathe with the body of its sound, the, the thump that uh, is typical of the snare. And uh, the room also has its own space that is conflicting. I really don't care about this area, honestly, because this is uh, where the snap, the snap of the snare is. Uh, and uh, uh, I want it to be wide. So it's a rock track. So uh, it's good if it's, uh, this is roomy. Uh, it's just uh, down below here that if we have too much of resonances, too much of the room, too much reverb, we are going to to have rumble at have a, a messy sound. So uh, now I can do the same thing for. Let, let me loop everything because it's easier. I can do the same thing for uh, the overheads that has the same problem. You see how many of the action is uh, going on here in the red uh, hello. Uh, it's the overhead. And uh, it's exactly where the snare is. So also picks up a um, lot of kick. This is this area. This uh, area below 100 hertz is uh, at the lowest part of the kick snare. So uh, the kick drum, sorry. So I have to clean everything here. And uh, I will go to my overhead track. Uh, it's here. And we'll do the same thing with an eye pass filter. Let's see together with the snare. Well, if these two colors are too similar, as you can see, so I want to have a, a better uh, overview of the, of the different tracks. So I can change the color and make it a uh, useful blue. <laughs> Let's say it's a useful blue. Uh, to change the color, just click here on the on the box. You can change the color only of the active track that is uh, surrounded by these uh, highlights here, because uh, otherwise you will activate the the track in the in the spectrum view. So uh, it's better, but we're still having too much snare here. So I can do the same thing and uh, with the low shelf, decrease the level of that area. I need to go higher in frequency. Okay. And now it's definitely better. The snare is the king here and uh, the overheads are just there to help the sound. Uh, of course, uh, I'm not equalizing uh, uh, the overheads to sound good right now, just to fix conflicts, because otherwise I would have uh, lifted up the highs and removed uh, some of the mud at four, uh, 400 hertz. Um, but I'm concentrating uh, just on the fixing the issue right now with this kind of tools. Uh, I'm not using the right equalizer to do that, because uh, this is uh, um, an equalizer that is best suite to create a sound, not to, to fix that. Uh, but uh, I'm keeping the, the right equalizer for later when I will show you the total EQ that is a surgical and uh, can easily cut uh, uh, those kind of, uh, of issue. Uh, now, uh, everything. Yeah, yeah, it's something we have in mind for the second version of Total EQ, but just right now it's a very complex plugin and uh, I don't want to complicate it too much. To comp we like to make uh, uh, easy plugin that uh, make uh, a few things, uh, not create monster plugin, but make everything. Uh, and so it's something that I think it's useful there. Uh, but uh, it's, it can easily become a very complicated plugin. 
So uh, we have to, to really think uh, how to fit those features uh, without uh, uh, making it uh, um, a plugin that is too heavy. So if I enable right now the spectrum analyzer Frex with on the master, I can see that we have uh, a more balanced uh, sound here and uh, of course, we cleaned up everything and we have the right peak here, the snare hits here, and uh, a better overall uh, spectrum. Uh, but we can do uh, even better uh, using TotallyQ. Now I'll go uh, to show you TotallyQ. Just let me disable uh, SW34EQ. And I will add totally Q. Just let me, we already have some curves. So uh, I will just enable that and uh, use uh, the same views we had before. Okay, this is uh, our kick on Frex and on totally Q. What we did here is to remove the rumble of the kick down here with a very steep high pass filter, 48 dB for octave at 30 Hz. This is because uh, honestly, in this recording, there is a lot of, uh, uh, you cannot hear it of course, but there is a lot uh, of um, room rumble because the floor of the room was resonating. So, uh this filter help us uh, uh, to remove uh, everything that is not really actually a sound but just the resonance of the floor uh, these are to shape the sound of the kick and nothing more but uh, we already already uh, placed another total EQ here with uh, a curve, the same high high filter, high pass filter, very step here, because I want to remove the low part of the of the snare and make room for the kick. Yeah, that's what uh, we were talking earlier. Uh, we have planned to make version two of of Total EQ sooner or later, as soon as we get uh, as much much feature to justify that as many feature uh, let's say um, we have some feature requests but the amount of uh, of them is not enough to justify a, a version two so once we get to the right amount of uh, of new feature we can create a version two and integrate uh, the multiflex view there uh, what we need to be careful is not to overdoing that because uh, uh, TotalEQ is already a very uh, complicated plugin. So uh, I don't want to create uh, monster plugins. Um, so if I add kick and snare with these EQs enabled, you will see that we have uh, no conflict here as shown by the conflict mode. We have very low level. We never go above uh, 46, 43, negative 43 dB or something like that. So it's very low and uh, it's uh, definitely a cleaner sound. Um, you can already see that from using these two tracks. Uh, we also have the same issue with the overheads and the room. And if I go to the overheads, and also enable total EQ. You see that I've used the same high pass filter. I really love high pass filter because they clean up stuff. Um, so I prefer to start that uh, everybody has a, a favorite way of, of mixing. I prefer to start with uh, uh, a very clean sound, uh, very separated sound because uh, I can make it dirtier after that but i want to start with something that it's uh, 
really separated. Um, so you see that uh, the overheads and the kick never share the same space where the mud is, this, this low part here. And if I add the snare, it's uh, also very clean. And uh, this is very useful. This is a terrific tool to, to do the kind of mixing I'm doing because uh, I really can't see uh, where the frequencies uh, are colliding, where are fighting each other for space. Uh, and uh, I think that if you want to make some modern music, uh, you have to uh, create a separated sound. Um, if you are looking for vintage sound, there is no need to go that surgical, but uh, you don't need this kind of tool too. Uh, this is for a very modern, modern sound, fast sounding tracks. So um, I could have also used a, a higher frequency here in the overheads to clean up even more and uh, not having uh, clashes between the, the body of the snare that you can see it's at around 200 hertz and uh, the, the one in the overheads. So this is very clean now. And if I add the room track, you see all the mess down here, we can easily remove that using another instance of total EQ with uh, the same high pass filter. Now we have uh, a better, better sounding room it is the green one, remember? And uh, we can also have a cleaner sound leaving just the kick down below. You can see in Total EQ, the spectrum analyzer is very useful because uh, uh, it gives you the, the idea where the resonances are, where the peaks in your spectrum are, but you can also see the before and after treatment. So when using this kind of uh, filters, you can uh, really see the part you removed and uh, uh, up where you removed. So now the conflict down here where the, the thump pump of the, of the kick drum uh, is, uh, is went away. Uh, we also have uh, a clean uh, snare sound because we don't have uh, uh, let's say I want to go even higher. We don't have anything except the mic of the, of the snare that has the thump of the snare. And here we have the stereo stuff. In fact, if I go to the side view, I can see that I only have the overheads that are stereo and are above here. It's important that you don't have that much Stereo, that much stereo content in the lowest part uh, because uh, it tends to mess up your mixes. When you, uh, in back in the days, when you uh, mastered for vinyl, I'm not that old, but I remember some, some of my teachers that uh, uh, was explaining that when you mixed for vinyl, you had to keep everything below um, 200 hertz uh, or something like that, only mono, uh, because there was the problem of the needle skipping the groove uh, if there was uh, too much excursion between left and right channel. So uh, you, that was something that um, old engineer I used to keeping the, the low at mono. We also have a plugin for that. It's um, the elliptic cube, but we don't have uh, uh, it's not uh, the, the subject of this talk. Well, it creates some fuzzing issue. I, I'm really, I really don't care that much about phase uh, uh, when mixing because, uh, uh, because, uh, because uh, there is the, the human ear, in my experience, is not that sensible to phase. It's sensible to time alignment but uh, it's not the same as phase. Uh, also, uh, we are uh, cutting uh, uh, something that is going to be masked by the, 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 the level of the kick drum that is uh, prominent there. 
So uh, the phasing issue are anyway masked by, by the heat drum. Keep in mind that the levels are still important and we have the kick drum above the other sound. Uh, so the only thing uh, uh, I can uh, I can get and anyway if you want I use this exact same session let me uh, look up uh, uh, the the YouTube video uh, just give me a second because I have used the, exactly the same session in the last YouTube video you did we did uh, explaining multiflex so um, you can hear the sound from there. Uh, here it is. I'm giving you the link right now. So, in this video, I have uh, exactly the same session and I'm doing almost the same stuff. So, uh, using multifrax to identify areas and uh, totally cute to clean up everything. So, uh, if you if you want to have a, a listen, you can see that there is not a big phase issue. Um, they are, for those technicals, uh, they are um, Butterworth filters, so they have uh, uh, the standard phasing. They are the most common filters you can see, so you can find. So um, they have some, some phase distortion uh, at, um, at cut off, but not that much. We don't uh, really don't have a, a big phase issue. Uh, I don't have a phase view right now, uh, but I can add probably one if uh, if uh, it's something that you think it's useful. I can I can add a phase view to totally Q in uh, in, in an update. Let me know if uh, it's something you would be interested in having. So you can see the actual phase distortion created by the EQ curve. We don't uh, have a linear phase filter in, uh, in Total EQ because uh, I don't know if you like them, but I really, uh, I'm not a fan of uh, linear phase uh, filters uh, because they all, the, the first thing is that they create latency. So they cannot be used uh, uh, in a live situation, and one of the idea between uh, our plugins line is uh, to be able to use every plugin uh, live uh, uh, as a mixing tool or uh, as a production tool, and they also create pre ringing exactly. And these, uh, ex especially in electronic music, uh, smears a lot of the, of, of the of the attack of kick and snare, and uh, uh they in, in big sound system you can hear it very clearly that the that the sound is not coming uh, uh, at once at you but you have a, a little bit of uh, pr pr we call it pre-ringing but uh, it's it's like uh, the sound starts a little bit earlier um with a little fade in let's say um that's the nature of the filter because uh they are symmetrical in the in the time domain so it's it's a, a little bit technical uh and uh it's not the the object of this uh, of this webinar uh but uh, if uh, if we wanted i it's my preference is to have this kind of drastic filters but uh, if i go for uh, 18 dB uh, octave filter, it works well the same way. It's not that, uh, it's, it's really not that uh, the, the drastical, uh, but uh, oh, it's the room track here. Uh, but it, uh, it works. I don't know why I can see anything right now. Um, 
interesting. Well, this is interesting. Um, I will remove and re-add the plugin. And uh, you can see that right now uh, the, the filter is not that drastic. It also introduces much more, much less phase distortion. I should have used the US3, US T3 version, sorry. Um, so I can pick up the track names and all the other stuff. Uh, this is a limitation of the technology we have encountered right now. Um, the track sharing works only if you are using all this, the, the, mm, the same type of plugin across all the session. So if you use the, uh, if you use a VST3, you have to use VST3 for every spectrum analyzer. And if you use VST, you have to do the same for every spectrum analyzer because they occupy different memory spaces. This is a, a technical issue and they cannot share the information. So uh, stick to the same kind of effect. Uh, all VST, all VST3, all the audio unit, uh, otherwise, they you cannot see the different tracks together. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, what I was uh, um, I was going to what I wanted to share to show you uh, how Multiflex and Total EQ can really help cleaning up this kind of stuff. Um, now, the last plugin we have to see. It's 31 and key two. I don't know if anybody knows this plugin because it's a quite peculiar plugin. We designed this. This is a we have to I have to make a little background of this one. We have designed this plugin after the request for a lot from a local radio station that wanted to have all the track that sounded almost the same. Given a, given a certain uh, frequency spectrum reference. So uh, we thought that the easiest way to do that was um, to use a, a 31 bands equalizer connected to a spectrum analyzer, because uh, in this way, we can see um, the level of each band uh, you are talking about the spectrum analyzer with the uh, with the LEDs. Uh, you want to know the name uh, of the of the hardware unit? It's the audioscope. Uh, I don't know if uh, you know the the that that hardware unit. Uh, I can look up a picture if you if you want. Uh, the the movement of the LED bars is designed exactly in the same uh, specs as the audioscope, but we added uh, uh, the lowest and the highest uh, bars bars because uh, uh, they only have twenty eight bars. Uh, so uh, what we did is uh, to take the output of the each of the bands. Uh, so we know the, the level of the frequency at each, uh, each band. And with uh, some clever algorithm, uh, well, it sounds good, but it's not magic. I will explain exactly how it works. It's pretty, it's pretty easy because what we want to do with this uh, equalizer is to uh, remove masking. What does it mean exactly? Uh, if we have uh, uh, strong differences between uh, adjacent, between closed bands, uh, we want to remove this difference as much as possible so, uh, so that uh, the highest one does not uh, uh, mask. We say, we say mask, but it actually um, it's here that much that to cover the frequency uh, um, close to that. So uh, with uh, analyzing the average level of all the bands and then looking at the differences between closed bands, we can uh, create 
uh, a, a kind of uh, a, a compensation curve for the Q uh, to uh, reduce these differences as much as possible. So if I enable the plugin, you have now the classic spectrum analyzer uh, taken from the from the audioscope that shows the level of uh, our drum bus. And uh, uh, this is also very useful if uh, you want uh, to, um, to fix something here. Let's say uh, we have uh, this 500 Hertz. I see that it's uh, probably a little bit too much because I want it's a drum bus, so I want it to be scooped. So uh, if you, I can easily do that and remove, uh, lower the frequency to have it more balanced. Or like I think most of you does, uh, use uh, this plugin in uh, auto mode. So I can use uh, the static and continuous mode. The static uh, mode is uh, what I would do if I was mastering uh, um, a song or creating uh, uh, or uh, fixing a, a, a bus because I use this plugin a lot on uh, on single buses too. I bust all the drums, pass it on 31, bust all the guitars and uh, pass it on 31 because the the end uh, result is more balanced uh, than uh, than than using just one instance on the master uh, of course of course you have uh, to trade uh, a little bit of phasing because you have 31 filters that can um, uh, cause cause some uh, some phasing issue especially when when they move on the highest frequency so it's you have to to keep in mind that and uh, i prefer using statically in this way uh, the continuous mode is what was designed for that radio station because uh, using the continuous mode it's a continuously adjust uh, um, the the track uh, the sound of the track uh, how it how does it Oh, so it, it's a problem with the, with the numbers written a little bit too, too small. There is a, a reason why we decided to use this format, because uh, we want to port uh, sooner or later, probably sooner, uh, our newest plugin to the iPad. So uh, we were using this uh, screen proportion because it's the same of the iPad full screen. Yeah. Um, I think uh, iOS uh, product music production is going to be big, big in the next uh, year. It's, it's already quite big. Um, and uh, a tool like that can be very useful. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be M1. Uh, so we are we are starting to thinking forward and uh, already preparing the plugin to be compatible with that format. Uh, but it's not uh, an easy task to port something that uh, is uh, born to be used with a mouse on uh, on an interface that uh, it's going to be used with a with a finger. So <laughs> uh, this is the the the, the, the task. By the way, um, going back to, to, to the explanation, this continuous mode works like uh, if the, the single sliders were uh, kept by um, rubber. Uh, when they find a peak, they compensate for that peak. Uh, so uh, they lower the, the level or increase the level and slowly try slowly trying to get back to the original zero position unless they find another peak that keeps them uh, moving once again so uh, this is a uh, useful it's useful to understand how that logic works so um so you can understand why uh, something works the way it works uh, it's not, it's continuous in the way that uh, continuously search for peaks and tries to recover to zero. Uh, so it's very, 
it's something that is very useful if you uh, are mixing together uh, different songs, like for uh, a podcast, for example, or if you are at a radio station, you're broadcasting. Uh, it, with this tool, you can uh, easily uh, create a, a constant frequency response and have everything sound, sound much more homogeneous. Yeah, um, a DJ live set too, exactly. It's, it's meant to be used in uh, this kind of situation where you don't know um, uh, the, the content, the overall content from beginning to end. So um, it simply adjust at the, at the, in real time. Uh, I usually like to keep uh, uh, everything at one second because I think it's uh, the most balanced time mm, time for, for for this kind of operation. But also four seconds if you if you don't want to move sliders too fast, it's very good. In um, in this way, you are reducing the number of moves, so the number of fishing issue and and everything. Um, in the sample peaks, sorry, uh, I lost uh, the question. What was exactly? Can you please help me understand your question about intersample peaks? Okay. Um, no, 31 right now uh, does not oversample. So um, it works at um, the, 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 your session frequency, sample frequency. So it, it does not offer oversampling right now. Uh, simply because uh, 31 filters to process the sound, uh, 31 to analyze it uh, are really a lot of, a lot of, uh, of, of filters to process. And uh, doing it uh, uh, at uh, two times of a sampling, uh, it's a lot of processing. Um, so probably with the, with the new machines, it can be done. And we don't want our plugins to, to, to wait too much on CPU. Uh, and really, it's an equalizer. So uh, you don't have that, those, those, that a lot of problems with, uh, um, with the non-linearities. Because we don't do we don't do that. We are just doing linear processing here, and uh, and um, oversampling is very useful when you do non-linear processing because you create you create aliasing or aliasing. I don't know the right way to, to, to pronounce it, um, and so uh, it's useful in that context. Uh, in equalizer, it's useful only if you want to have. Uh, uh, a very analog sounding high frequency bands uh, and in this case it could be useful because uh, uh, what we are having here is asymmetrical belts uh, because uh, they are clamped at uh, uh, two kilohertz to 20 kilohertz sorry uh, so they are not symmetrical the, the last bands uh, i haven't ever I never analyzed that exactly but they are probably not symmetrical. Uh, this is not really a problem because uh, you rarely move this stuff here. Or now uh, we are looking at the drum bus, so we have a lot of content. Keep in mind that uh, over here. Keep in mind that every move that the fader does is relative to the close to the fader next to it. Uh, so if you have uh, um, just uh, sound just signal just over here they are going to move a lot because uh, uh, it makes uh, the average level and compares to the level of each slider, uh, um, of each band, sorry, uh, comparing it to the one before and the one after. Uh, what's OBS? I don't know what, I don't know which kind of software is that. But as long as it supports um, VST 
or VST3 or audio unit, it will work. There is a no, this is not a very, this is not a very particular, very, very strange uh, plugin. So it's just an equalizer at the eyes of the, of the application. Um, but anyway, I would like to use the static mode for, for our bus because uh, we just want to find out the best balance uh, to, to have uh, the, the, the drum sound uh, balanced and not masking uh, anything. Uh, I have two algorithms to choose from. The standard one, it's average. And uh, we also made a new one that is called median because instead of using the average filter, it uses a median filter. It there, I don't know if you have some notion about filters, uh, uh, about uh, some statistical filters. Uh, they are simply two way of representing uh, uh, the, the level in the, in, in the mid, let's say, and uh, changes this kind of uh, reference changes everything regarding equalization because uh, uh, it creates two different references for the closed band evaluation. So if I use the average, everything is summed together and divided by 31. And this level used as a base comparison level for the level of each band. While if I use the median filter, uh, every band, uh, is, the band is ordered from the highest to the lowest level. And the middle level, the level in the middle, is taken as a reference. So usually as some kind of tilt over, uh, over uh, something over here. So uh, it, it creates some kind of tilt. So it's probably this uh, this uh, drum bus is probably uh, um, uh, too uh, too prominent in the high frequency. So you can clearly see a tilt filter curve here that uh, removed some of the some of the eyes frequency. Uh, what I can say, I can, this is the knob that increments or decrements the amount of uh, equalization applied. I usually use it at the default position, but if you want to have it um, stronger, you can have a stronger equalization, you can do it. And uh, you also have uh, the compensation curve. Compensation curve is the, is the key here, because if I don't apply any compensation curve, well, I, I like the average on everything. It's, uh, it's the one, uh, that uh, I prefer to choose always. Uh, I like I use will I will use median only if I find that everything uh, the sound is uh, very dark or has uh, too many uh, too too much content in the lowest uh, mid part in the lowest in this uh, area here uh, because it tends to make things brighter the median filter. Uh, not in this case, but usually it tends to make things brighter. If uh, um, I don't use any compensation, uh, if I don't use any compensation, uh, usually uh, the highs are very lift up. So uh, we have created a default compensation curve that is uh, taken from the average of uh, a lot of, uh, of the frequency response, uh, to the average of the frequency response of a lot of record uh, I have analyzed uh, during the development. And uh, it's something like this. I'll try to, to draw it with, with a finger, starting from the lows. It's something like this. And it's a pretty standard mastering curve. Uh, but you also can create your own activating this small slider. Uh, these sliders create an offset to, uh, the, to the 
computed one by the algorithm. So if I want, uh, for example, to re reduce the high frequency, I can, with this slider, create this offset, offset that keeping draw, draw down the slider, keeping the same adjustment, I simply create uh, an offset before the algorithm. So uh, when, if the algorithm uh, would say, okay, I need to boost uh, 0.8 uh, dBs, if I create the offset of 1 dB, for example, it will just apply the offset and the correction. So I can create something that uh, I like more, for example, than the, the custom, than the default curve. If I want to have more bass over here, for example, I can do that. Yeah, the default compensation is a form of ideal curve, but there is no such thing as the ideal curve. So it's uh, something, a curve that it's very common, let's say, uh, but it doesn't have to work for everyone in every context. Uh, so if um, that curve is not working for you or you prefer to have your own sound because uh, this custom curve allows you to create your own sound uh, because the plugin will always uh, create uh, uh, the compensation according to your curve. So if you want to have uh, uh, very, uh, a very big dip at 500 hertz or or something like that over here, you can do that. You can do that and the plugin will compensate according to your offset. If I put it in continuous mode, you can clearly see that, that we have the dip we created here and the fader moves around this dip. So if this was the curve I, will, I would like to use, for to create my own fingerprint, my own sound, I can easily save that, saving uh, the compensation curve and uh, loading once again to always have the same, uh, um, the same compensation for all the track I master, for example, or all the buses I use. Uh, this is because uh, this way you can create something that is right for you, for your genre, for the, the sound you have in mind. And you can uh, easily, easily create the, the curve you want, the, the sound you have in mind. Uh, I don't know how to explain better than this. <laughs> so if you, I think uh, I have uh, explained you everything about this plugin. Uh, if you have any specific question, uh, this was not something that it was not uh, a session about uh, explaining the whole total EQ or uh, the whole uh, 31. It was just uh, an idea on uh, how a spectrum analyzer can help you tweak your sound to to have uh, uh, the, the, to bring it to a final result. Do you mean uh, for which equalizer? Sorry, Paolo. Well, it's something we can think about adding to Total EQ. Uh, but honestly, uh, as I told before, I'm not really a fan of linear phases, linear phase EQ. So only if there is a, a very strong request, uh, because of course, if uh, you want it and uh, you, our customer think it's a useful feature. There is uh, nothing to prevent us to add that. Uh, so if you if you want, just uh, really open a, a support ticket with a, with a feature request. And if they are uh, they they are coming, if we have a lot of feature requests uh, request, requesting uh, the linear fades, we can uh, we can add it for sure. We are collecting always a feature request. So if you have an idea, if you have a suggestion, you can uh, write me an email uh, to my personal email 
that you can find it on the website. It's anyway, it's uh, saverio.vigny at honorplugins.com um, or open a support request on our website suggesting the feature and we will uh, add it to our uh, feature request list. And when uh, there are enough feature, we can uh, think about a new version of the plugin with uh, those uh, uh, feature requests included. Do you have any other question? In the meanwhile, I'm having some fun with, uh, with the equalizer. <laughs> So we can also see the difference between uh, the default and the custom compensation curve. If I reset the auto queue, well, in the end, the compensation curve I draw was not that different from the default, it seems. So if you, if you are fine and don't have any, any question, I can thank you for well, you are touching uh, a bad point. Um, we are quite behind uh, schedule with the support request because we had, honestly, we had some, some issue with the guy that was uh, uh, carrying over the support request and uh, he had some personal problems and uh, we, we've been left, we, we, we are quite behind our schedule. Uh, I am personally working on the on, on the on the support request, and uh, hopefully in the next weeks I will be able to to reply to everyone. So uh, I really apologize. Uh, uh, we we tried to make it work, but right now it's quite hard. So um, I I really apologize, and I try to make something. Uh, to try to improve with the, with the response time. Well, Adrian, it's, um, it's the continuous uh, auto queue mode and uh, it's simply the algorithm continuously applied. I was uh, explaining the earlier when, uh, when a peak is detected, here in the in the bands, uh, the slider is uh, adjusted accordingly, and uh, uh, some kind uh, of uh, of rubber brings brings it back to zero position unless another peak is detected. So it changes another one, another uh, once again, and uh, uh, create another correction. This um, this mode is meant for continuous live stream where you don't have control over the, the content you are, you are streaming. Uh, um, it's, it has been designed for a radio station here. And uh, it, it works, uh, uh, it aims is to create uh, um, an, uh, an homogeneous frequency distribution uh, between uh, different songs uh, or, or content, uh, even, uh, even spoken, uh, sp spoken content. Uh, if I reply to your question. No, there is no threshold. The threshold is uh, dynamic. The threshold is uh, the, decided by the algorithm you have chosen. Uh, if you choose the average algorithm, the threshold is the average level of each of the bands. While if you choose the median algorithm, the threshold is the median level of all the bands. So um, this, uh, the, let's call the threshold, but it's not really a threshold. It's a reference level to which uh, the differences between the band, the average level, and uh, the band before and the band after is, uh, is, is computed. Oh, well, See, the algorithm is very simple and it works uh, incredibly well. I don't know how the other uh, the others implement AutoQ because I see that it's very complex. Uh, the, um, they create much more complex a Q curve than 31 is capable of. But uh, 
to shape uh, the sound and give uh, a general cleanup, uh, it works, uh, works very well. Any, any other question? Well, I tried, uh, I tried uh, Galfos once and I uh, found that uh, it creates very complex uh, EQ curve. I don't know how they, they do that. They are probably analyzing uh, uh, a lot of uh, bands using uh, uh, an FFT, and, uh, but I don't know how they decide the EQ curve afterwards. Uh, and it works pretty well. Uh, this is a completely different tool because uh, that tool is able to clean up uh, uh, a track much better than 31 is, uh, but 31 is not designed to do that. It's designed to be used on uh, master bus or uh, or buses uh, of instrument buses and uh, to fix uh, the general uh, uh, masking, uh, trying to keep uh, close bands as uh, as as close in level to each other. Sorry for for the bad wording, um, to avoid that one band spikes over the other and create masking. Well, you cannot really turn off the analyzer. So, uh, because the analyzer is required to create the, the Q curve. So uh, if you turn off the analyzer, you are just shutting down the, the display uh, and uh, and uh, honestly uh, the previous version was using the CPU to dry to draw the to dry to draw the guy so it saved uh, a bunch of cycles but uh, this version here uses uh, uh, OpenGL on um, on Windows and uh, Metal on uh, on Mac so it's uh, hardware accelerated and uh, you don't really get much a lot of benefit from sure from turning off uh, the analyzer on talking about how how it weights uh, on my machine that is uh, an i7 i have uh, 2.7 percent cpu usage so it's not ev it's not light it's a uh, uh, medium flagging. And of course, if you close uh, uh, the, the window, you can save uh, some CPU because you don't have to draw everything. Um, you can't really see that from uh, from that view because the window will be open anyway but if i open the performance meter uh, you can see that on the master we only have uh, 31 and frex and we are using two percent of cpu so with the window closes close it it uses less cpu And this is a uh, pretty standard because um, when the window is open, you have to prepare the, the data for, uh, for the, the guy to, to draw. So um, there is some, some work that is uh, still done by the, by the CPU when the window is open to prepare the data. Uh, nope, 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 Adrian, because um, a view, view meter is not using DPFS. View meter is a, a loudness uh, way, is a loudness measure. So uh, it doesn't look to the highest peaks, but uh, it, it looks to the average level 
uh, across uh, uh, 300 milliseconds integration time. So uh, if uh, you, you normalize to the BFS, you are normalizing to the highest peaks. Um, but uh, uh, these peaks will be ignored by VU meter because for its uh, nature, it uh, analyzes loudness. It's a way to analyze, to analyze loudness that has been invented uh, in the 40s uh, for telephone lines. So it's a very old standard. And uh, it's not the best standard, of course, but uh, since it was the only thing available when recording uh, started, engineers always use it for meter. So they are used to that. And it's the, the reference for this reason. I think uh, uh, LAU, it's a better way to represent the loudness. It's uh, much more modern and it takes into account uh, frequency distribution. So it's much more useful. And uh, I tend uh, to, to prefer to use LAU meter right now than few meter. Well, you're welcome. Any any other question? So, sorry, I I don't think. Uh, what do you mean with the? Um, yeah, internally, internally the the plugin works uh, with the sixty four bit uh, float numbers. So it's the it's the highest precision you can have uh, on uh, on a computer. Uh, you cannot have uh, a higher precision than that. So uh, it's, yeah, 64 floating points. But uh, any today, every though uses internally 64 floating points. I, I don't think uh, there, there is still anybody out there that uses 32 or integer for what matters. Uh, also Pro Tools is not using Integer anymore. Because it's much more convenient to have a floating points because you can never overflow a floating point register. Uh, you only lose precision. So you can uh, increase the gain and uh, without clipping, let's say, uh, a register. And uh, it's very, it's much more easier to make DSP in floating point that is uh, in uh, Integer. Of course, Integer is faster. Uh, but uh, today we, we don't have problem about uh, having CPUs that are too slow. Uh, this was a problem 20 years ago. When I first started uh, learning DSP, uh, floating point was not that fast, but it was uh, uh, something like 99. So Pro Tools was king for, uh, for, for one reason, for the hardware uh, DSP boards that they sold together with the, with the dough. Well, the inbox came a little bit later, but I was talking about the Pro Tools HD. Well, uh, Adrian, uh, the differences uh, are uh, that there are two different plugins. Uh, mm, let's say that uh, uh, Coherence Meter is uh, it's, it's a, a, a very strange plugin um, in the way that it simulates how internally, how your tracks re will react to a limiter on the master bus. Uh, 
this uh, gives us give us an idea of uh, the, the let's say um, how much you have to correct your peak to average ratio to uh, don't overload a limiter and uh, have too much gain reduction on on peaks. Uh, I, I don't know if I explain myself because these are not plugins I designed. They are they came from uh, uh, the idea of uh, of um, an engineer in Milan uh, that is using this these techniques uh, every day and wanted to to put it in a plugin. Um, yes, Mark. Yes, Mark. It's uh, I, I recorded the webinar and it will be available uh, uh, on YouTube. Um, so it, it actually uh, internally uses a, a, a limiter to see how much the limiter will react uh, is going to react to to the to the sound and uh, um, it will show you uh, how many dbs you are off uh, according to your target so if you want to have uh, eight dbs of uh, headroom of um, dynamic range and uh, the limiter is going to compress more and you are going to have less of that range the um, coherence meter will uh, will tell you that uh, you have to make some correction uh, i don't know if uh, if i explain uh, well it's it's not a ufs it's not rms it's um it's it's in some way uh, DBFS because uh, it's the difference between uh, the the range between the the lowest uh, average level and uh, the highest peak uh, as expressed by the limiter. So um, I will the signal is passed through an, an hidden instance of our Magnus and uh, it's compressed. Uh, using uh, some some setting that uh, he decided the, that that guy decided, and uh, then we look at the compression, the amount of gain reduction, and we compare it uh, with the range you are requesting. So, if uh, the gain reduction we are applying, it's uh, uh, it's too much, we inform you that. Uh, uh, you have uh, uh, comp you, you have something that is going to be compressed a lot by the limiter, so it has to be fixed somewhere. I don't know if uh, if I explain how it works. While track coherence, it's simply uh, it's very it's it's a simple. Uh, um, uh, uh, sorry, I'm missing the words now. Um, uh, dynamic range meter. So you see uh, the dynamic range of your tracks using that, uh, that, that meter. It just looks at uh, the difference between the lowest and the highest part. You're welcome, Adrian. No problem at all. Um, so Max was asking about total EQ, um, the saturation, the analog function. Um, saturation and analog uh, what does it mean actually the saturation is that it's a, a standard transistor simulation that creates the, the classic saturation of uh, of analog boards um, usually from uh, the 80s and 90s we are not talking uh, about uh, vintage stuff here okay 80s is vintage now by the way <laughs> uh, not an EVA, more an SSL kind of saturation for it for to to be able to understand. Hi, Paolo. Well, see, I will. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I will put this video on uh, on YouTube so you can watch it later. But nothing interesting happened in the first uh, in the first fifteen minutes. Just me messing around with the setting uh, of the audio and failing miserably. Uh, so <laughs> no, you are not. We haven't missed anything. Um, I was saying about the saturation of total EQ. It's uh, it's the same saturation you can find, uh, for example, in our analog stage when you uh, choose the op amp um, saturation mode. While the analog, it's a little bit different because it tries to emulate what happens inside uh, 
an analog circuit when um, uh, condensers receive a high peak uh, of a high level and uh, uh, let's say they they react for a, a very short time uh, they change the some of the of the parameter of the equalizer so uh, you you don't have that exit frequency you don't have that exit gain everything uh, is is slightly moving when you have uh, big peaks <coughs> sorry uh, big peaks uh, in this in the sound passing through the equalizer uh, if i enable that you can clearly see uh, on the kick drum for example if I, for example, enable the analog mode for this band and I press play, you see that the yellow curve moves. Uh, it slightly moves because uh, the low frequency are very high in level here and changes when, when they hit the, the equalizer, they slightly change uh, the parameter of the equalizer. That this was uh, it's happening in analog gear uh, and uh, it gives a sound a little bit more movement of course it uses a, a very high level of cpu because uh, uh, it's uh, every parameter every equalizer parameter is uh, re, re computed in real time so it uses quite a lot of cpu this feature especially if you enable for every band uh, across the whole equalizer you see how it moves but it creates um, a more interesting sound and if you if your system uh, can handle it uh, try it because uh, it's, it gives uh, especially on uh, on stereo buses where the differences are different where the changes are different between left and right channel uh, it can create more interesting results and uh, more live sound um, it's something that is available only in totally Q from us uh, I don't know if other plugin makers have this kind of technology. Yeah, exactly, Max. It creates a little bit, a little difference between left and right channel on stereo tracks. Um, the saturation amount is just the amount of distortion that is added to to that specific band. Keep in mind that the band comes one after the other, so. This is the first signal enters here, then travels through here, then goes through here. So if I uh, add the saturation to this band over here, the saturation is carried over to the next band. So the equalizer and the saturation is applied to a pre-saturated band. I don't know if I explain myself but this is a, a, a serial equalizer it's the most common kind of equalizer you can find also in the hardware world uh, yeah exactly max and uh, this uh, we have planned to make uh, to create the, uh, the option to make the filters in parallel uh, there are not that much equalizer that have parallel filters some apis uh, if i don't remember if i'm not mistaken um uh some parts of the ssl 4k equalizer are parallel uh like so i if i don't if i'm not mistaken the the the, the mid bands are parallels um uh, so it's uh it's, it's not that common it's not a common kind of equalizer but you can have uh, more interesting results with this kind of configuration and uh, we will add it for sure in the next version because I'm the first one being curious to know how it will work. Um, regarding the um, Link IO and the cool out, Link IO is just a, um, a manual compensation for input and output levels. So if I increase the input level, the output level is compensated by the same amount over here. And the same happens if I move the output level. While the Q loud is meant for monitoring, and I explain you in a while why, uh, what it does is uh, to analyze, shut down the input and output level because you cannot adjust it, adjust them in this way, in this mode. Uh, it analyzes the level 
the average the um, LAU fast level at the input and uh, uh, compensate in the output uh, for the gain changes you have made uh, with your equalization. And uh, in the output, it applies uh, uh, compensation uh, to have you uh, to let you have the same LAUFS as you had in the input. So your ES are not full are not fooled by uh, the gain change of the, of the equalizer. The, there is one issue here. Since uh, this is applied in real time, um, uh, you uh, the LUFS are analyzed every 300 milliseconds. So uh, if um, you are using a, a dynamic EQ, the dynamic EQ can create some pumping because it works like a sidechain compressor. And for this reason, I suggest uh, you use uh, the EQ loud, EQ loud only for monitoring and for judging your EQ curve, because otherwise uh, it will introduce some uh, loudness changes every 300 seconds. Any other question? Yes, it has, it has a threshold, but you cannot adjust it. <laughs> it's um, an automatic internal threshold. And um, it's uh, designed this way to keep it simple, but we will probably add uh, the parameter in the, the next uh, version, attack release and threshold, like the standard uh, um, dynamic EQ, because uh, many people ask for them. Uh, actually, the threshold is uh, dynamically generated using uh, comparing the output of the single filter to the average level. Um, uh, let's, I'm trying, trying to explain exactly how it works. Uh, we pass the signal just through this part of the filter, and we look at the output. Then we compare it to the average level of the signal. If um, this part here is below the level of this filter, we need to increase that. If it's above, and we are asking, of course, again, reduction, we need to decrease that. The amount of uh, reduction of, or gain is dependent uh, to the difference between those two filters. So if there is a lot of difference, uh, a lot of gain is applied or removed and if there is not much difference the eq doesn't move that much now if i want to create a negative eq here you see since probably uh, there is a very low input level that is never above uh, the level of the filter uh, i have to create a very very big uh, gain reduction uh, to have it move but if i do the same thing with this kind of filter here, for example, and I do a negative filter. You see much more movement because we have a lot of signal here. So uh, we, we prefer to have simple things. So as we can, we try to make uh, as much thing uh, as automatic as possible and intuitive. So I just click the, the the dot here and move it until I have uh, the reduction I want. This kind of a cube bring this kind of interaction. So uh, I'm not really looking at the numbers, but looking at the spectrum and uh, and see if the action is what I want. So I know that at max I have negative nine dB of, of reduction. So I'm I'm about I don't I don't want that probably uh, here it's good. I'm, I'm about at half, so I'm, I'm having 40 B of uh, reduction. I have to use the ears and the eyes to see that everything is working like it's intended. But anyway, the next uh, version, we have uh, the, the, the parameters exposed, so you can, you can trick them. But we just uh, have to find a way to put that, them in the interface without cluttering that, <coughs> that much. Any other question?
Yes, Dan. Yes, it would be very helpful. So if uh, nobody has another question, I will close the session and we will have another one for sure because it was a lot of fun. And uh, I, I cannot uh, tell you when because we have to decide that. This is all in the hands of Federica, who's, uh, uh, who's the person in charge of the marketing. So, so, <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, Thomas. We are trying to, to, to troubleshoot that. We, it, I, I promise it will work next time. <laughs> So thank you very much. It's uh, actually uh, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. and a half here. So I think I'll have a lunch. <laughs> and uh, of course, if you have suggestion or other question, I'm also available through email or on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Where, where you prefer, how you prefer, just, uh, just write your question. If you want to understand better Syncpressor, I can try to organize a, a webinar on that, on that plugin, bringing on Antonio Porcelli, which is uh, the engineer who designed the plugin. And uh, he, he can probably explain better than me how the plugin works. Uh, I will have to ask him. Okay, so guys, uh, thank you very much for for joining this, uh, this session and uh, we'll catch you soon. Goodbye everyone. <laughs>